What's going on guys, welcome to Gums Videos and welcome back to my WTF series reviews where I review something so bad that it's good or something so bad that you would much rather drink the three month old milk that you just remembered that you had in the back of your fridge. Today I'll be reviewing the Smurfs. So this is my second attempt because pesky little wire popped off and I didn't, I didn't even see it. Like it was connected but it wasn't all the way in. 25 minutes of footage, gone. So... It sucks because I did get to go on one of my rare tangents in anger. So if I can get that again with not forcing it, of course, I'll let you guys know. You guys will definitely see it. But um, The Smurfs is one of those films and properties I watch a lot growing up. Not because I wanted to, because of my mother. She's really a big fan of these properties. She likes she likes The Smurfs. She likes the, the Chipmunks movie. She likes the Medea movie. She likes the Nanny McPhee movies. If you guys don't know what Nanny McPhee is, it's basically a freaking knockoff of the um, the Mary Poppins. Stupid. It's, just, it's garbage. But anyway, so... So this one hits closer to home to me. Not in a very good way. Because I, like I've seen this probably or heard it a thousand times. So... Yeah, let's take a deep dive into this film. The movie opens up, and i got to ask you guys this question, because I never watched a TV show, uh, so I don't know what the lore is like, and which is crazy, because the movie should have really focused on the lore, but they wanted to go to New York City to sell tickets, I guess, I don't know. Beside the point, you have a shot with one of the Smurfs flying through the sky. You see a castle on the right. I'm like, okay, that could be Gargamel's castle, but whatever. But in the far distance, you see like a, a medieval-style castle. Not even a castle. It's just like a like an actual city. It looks like a, a normal city. Like, was that supposed to be in frame? Is that added digitally? Is that like, is there people in this world? Is there like civilizations? So like, what what's what is in this world then. It made me ask the question, is this on Earth? Is this an alternate reality Earth? Because if it's just regular Earth, why is there a portal to go from there to New York City? Because if there was uh, humans there, uh, like what are their connections with Smurfs? Is it just Gargamel that's after them? <laughs> Whatever. Continue with the movie. You take the swooping shot and then you enter like Smurf Village and you see Clumsy being a dumbass, just which is crazy because they, they coincide clumsiness with dumbassness throughout the entire movie. So that's always fun, even though half the cast is probably like got the IQ of a Tostitos chip. So anyway, beside the point, they you, you see this establishing shot and you see Smurfs break dancing. And then the greatest joke of the movie, by the way, coming up, he, he hits a thing of ice. It shatters into a million pieces some ice falls on top of a freshly cooked pizza and the guy's like i just created a frozen pizza i'm like first off you did not second off um by the laws of science uh that's just water on top of your pizza but i guess i mean there's a dude with a giant ass nose chasing little blue creatures that live in giant mushrooms and science doesn't really pertain here but whatever and then we cut to papa smurf Cooking his meth. I mean, he's he's cooking up a potion to figure out this vision. And what's really bu that really bugged me about this film, at least this time around, was the magic. Let's do exposition dump. Okay, this, this stuff is more powerful on a full moon, and it's noon. He's doing this thing at noon, and he's sitting there like, oh yeah, this vision visions are never wrong and he sees something bad happening i'm like okay so we already established that this doesn't matter we are we're establishing that this vision is not going to really amount to anything which is crazy because this is a very obnoxious subplot as an audience uh, like we just can't be like oh he's clumsy so we gotta watch out for him no we gotta be like okay now there's a vision of him fucking up so bad that we're gonna be in chains and cages and then we're gonna be tortured or we're gonna be forced to sweat what a life. Ugh. So he, he, he's like, the visions are never wrong. And he sees Clumsy and he's like, yo, dude, take it easy. Piss off. Well, we need some smart berries. And he's like, no, don't do it. I'll do it because it's near Gargamel. He's on high alert. Clumsy's like, you know what? It was, it's kind of near Gargamel, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. I'm going to prove a point. As one would. You would probably want to prove a point because everyone treats you like a douchebag, even though you are a douchebag, but you want to prove that you're not a douchebag while being a douchebag. 
And guess what? He acts like a douchebag and leads Gargamel to his to, to the kingdom. So this has been going on for, what, 30, 40, 50 years? I don't know how long this Gargamel versus fucking Smurfs thing's been going on. At least in this story, because again, this story doesn't really amount to anything other than let's just go to New York City. Clumsy's first thing is like, okay, this is why I bring up the whole clumsy equals dumb in this universe. Because clumsy is like, okay, let me, let me run right to my town, right to where I live, sleep, eat, and all my family is, right? Let me just take them there. Let me let me lead the one guy that wants to capture us all and lead him right to our houses. And then he's like, G -g 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 Gargamel! And then Papa Smurf is like, what the fuck did you do? So again, Clumsy being the big brain douchebag that he is with the bag of chromosomes in that fucking hat of his, he sees a sign that says, this way, with a leaf on top of it. He's like, okay, not suspicious at all. Let me go this way. Great cliche, by the way. Leaf falls off. He's like, he's like do not go this way. I'm like, ooh, very suspicious. Good writing. I can't imagine this being, what, draft 17, draft 18? High quality writing. So he goes that way. It's a fucking blue moon. Again, how often do blue moons happen? We don't know because this world's never really explained. And I'm going to get back into that in a second. Blue moon happens. Portal opens, 99% of the fucking town's like, let me go this way, and then the other six smurfs are like, oh, I think Clumsy went that way, what an idiot, let's go after him, they fall into this portal, landing in New York City, so this is where I'm going to beg the question, because the whole thing is, they're asking, the whole plot is, we gotta get this moon to turn blue, even though that does not happen, so that makes me ask, so why does this moon need to be blue, if... That moon was blue. And it, do both moons need to be blue? Because I think they established it that they needed to be blue. And, like, or does the, the opening of the gate have to be, like, a blue moon? Nothing's explained. They're just like, we need a blue moon. <laughs> do both of them need to be blue? Because if that's the case, then why do they land in New York City? If one of them needed to be blue, can, like, if it's just, like, a once-a-day thing, why didn't the portal reopen back up? Or is it a once-a-year thing? So no matter what, there's no real tension Again, that's one thing. It's a kid's movie, so there's not going to be a lot of tension, but there could be tension for the adults being like, what the hell is going to happen? Like, again, it doesn't have to be like that. It could just be like a family-friendly thing, but you got to make some fucking sense and just explain th some things to us how this magic works. No, 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 we're going back to clumsy, being clumsy. They meet Neil Patrick Harris's family, his, his him and his wife. His wife's always smiling, like, eh, things are good, y'all. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a hard worker. Here's another cliche I can't fucking stand that's in this movie. If you're a parent, a dad specifically, because this is I've never seen a hardworking mother figure that gets told that they're overworking. If there is, I apologize. It's just I'm just speaking facts. There's more hardworking fathers in these films that are told that they're overworking themselves. This dude's living in an apartment. In New York City, which is like, what, for 300 square feet, that's like $5,000 in New York City a month. And this dude's living in a fucking house that's bigger than mine right now. And I live in New Jersey. So that that's probably, what, $18,000 a month. And he just got promoted to vice, what, vice president of marketing. And on top of that, he's got two days to do this project. Because, again, cliche boss, you got two days to make this whole new marketing campaign for us. And if you fail, you're fired. Get out of here. What kind of you, – you? that's not how you run a company. Yes, I get bosses can be douchebags. They can be. But that's not how you run a business. You're just going to be going through all your people. Oh, you just fired your – just you, he, apparently she just fired her actual vice president of marketing. So she hires a new guy. So what happens if he fails? Fire him. But guess what? Now your marketing is so shit because you gave him two fucking days to do it. Now your now your stocks are going down the hill, and guess what? Now you can't you can't afford to pay your business. You can't do this and this, whatever. I'm talking about the business side when this is a fucking kids movie, but everyone's looking at Neil Patrick Harris when all these things are going wrong, and they're like, oh, you gotta stop overworking. You're just, you just gotta loosen up, have some fun. While Clumsy's over there fucking up his goddamn computer, he sends the boss this freaking like this image for his job. And he's like, okay, that's what you want approved? Okay, Pog, that's what we're going to use. And then Clumsy goes on top of the computer. Cliche, once again. He goes slippity, 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 and then he hits exactly the blue moon, though. The exact thing he made that was intentionally supposed to be released, but he, he kind of pussied out, and he went, I went to that one instead. And then 
He sends it to, to, to Times Square. That's where they all the billboards are going to go. You would think there's a little bit more security with that. Like, is this confirmation? you got to have a confirmation email. Like, there should be a multi-step process. Millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people are going to be in front of these signs. And it's literally, okay, email your boss for approval. Check. Okay, now let's email Times Square people to oh, put it there. Check. To me, it doesn't seem like it would be that easy. I feel like there would be a multi-step process beside the point. He could have just easily, like, be like, yo, uh, your boss said this is not the one I want. Whatever. Beside the point. Then they look at him like he's a fucking asshole because he's spazzing out that he might lose his job with a baby on the way. And I don't know what the mom's been doing. She might be on maternity leave. We don't know. We don't know what she does because it was never, ever established because, again, character development. So... Neil's having a fucking mental breakdown, as any of us dudes in this scenario would be. And then he snaps on the fucking Smurfs, as I would too. He's like, I didn't want this. I didn't want a bunch of small people running around. And the wife's like, you don't want a baby? Gasp. And then Neil's like, you know what I... Fucking Christ. And he leaves, as we would. But they paint him like the bad guy in this movie. Whereas in the sequel, we're supposed to feel bad for him, even though he's just walking, talking like a douchebag. It's crazy how the yin and yang of Smurfs 1 and Smurfs 2 are. Why is it with movies treating people who have to work to get what they want like assholes? Like, there's obviously the extremes of, like, Scrooge McDuck and, you know, the whole Christmas past, present, future, that whole Christmas tale, whatever... I get that. A Christmas Carol. You, you, those are things. You can tell a story that. But, like, why is that every time that they're just worried about getting fired, they are treated like an asshole. They are treated like a villain. I don't get it. I just don't. And she's like, but, look, they're so cute. Oh, my God. I'm like, how about this? You can raise your fucking kid on the streets while you say they're so cute. How is that going to treat you? Oh, wait. Oh, now your kid's starving because... Guess what? You don't have a job. He doesn't have a job. You don't have a house. But at least you got the six Smurfs and one trips on himself all the time. And one's wearing a fucking stupid Scottish outfit. And one's like, I kissed the Smurf and I liked it. And one's like, God damn my hip. And then you got George Lopez sitting there. I, I, I don't. What's, what's the message in this movie? Fuck work? Because I, I, honestly, listen, working every day is, like, sucks. It does. But we don't do it because we want to. We do it because we need the money. But he said he didn't want little children running around, so that means he doesn't want a kid anymore. I've known him for, what, like, seven, 17 years? Again, character development. We don't know how long we knew each other, but we known him for so long, and he clearly wanted a kid. But this one thing, he's like, I hate tiny people running around. He's like, she's like... Gasp! He doesn't want kids! He said he wanted kids in his entire marriage! And now he said that one thing because they're smashed on the ground, so it's obviously implied that he doesn't want babies. <laughs> I really fucking can't stand that scene. Like, every single time I watch that scene unfold, I just get angrier and angrier and angrier. I'm like, why are you mad at him? Why are you implying that when he's clearly he's talking about the Smurfs, you're taking it like a personal assault. Like you're a fucking Karen. Take it easy, Snowflake. He's not talking about your fucking kid that you end up naming Blue because you really want that kid to get bullied in school. How dare you name your kid Blue? And if you have a kid named Blue, shame on you. Shame. North Star, Poison Ivy, looking ass. Fuck it. Well, anyway, so while we're talking about this, then a couple things happen. Shenanigans, slapstick. The slapstick in this movie is pretty ass. There was one, maybe two. No, there was two laughs. One where there was a – with Gargamel. They're all with Gargamel. Gargamel sitting there with uh, – in a, in a porta potty in Central Park, and he goes like, oh, what the devils? And then it, that was funny. I was like, oh, that, that's funny. But they kept that joke going for 45 seconds to a minute, and it just, it just overplayed itself. So it kind of wore down itself really quick. And then on top of that, uh, the other joke that I really liked, that was actually genuinely funny. But I feel like I would have laughed a little bit more if the movie was better. And that's when he turns this clearly woman in her mid to late 20s dressed up to make her look like she's in her 50s. And he says, an eye offending dogfish. That is a funny ass joke. 
in context, that's funny. In the film, it was funny. It could have been funnier, though, if that movie was actually good. The Smurf adverb crap, that, that got annoying really quick, especially when every sentence had to have the word Smurf. Play a drinking game, guys. Take a shot of whiskey every time they say the word Smurf as an adverb. Now that we're reaching the end of the movie, Papa Smurf, again, a cliche. He's like, I gotta make the sacrifice play, even though Gargamel's in a different room. They're, they're running away from Gargamel, and they're, they enter this tiny little little pipe that big. Gargamel's not gonna get in there. He's not gonna be able to. And again, he's in a different room. Papa Smurf shuts the door, locks it, and he's like, run, Smurfs, run, 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 run. And he's having this whole, whole emotional speech. Then Gargamel shows up. I'm like, why do people have such a hard time making sacrifice plays? All you got to do is literally trim the scene down. Or, even better, have it they're barely making it out of there, right? Each time Gargamel is taking a step forward, instead of making a joke, you can get him get, getting closer, 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 closer. And then the second um, feet turn to inches, inches turns to centimeters, they just make it. But Papa Smurf sees that he's in arms rage and he can actually grab him. He shuts the gate, locks it buying them time to leave and there's no times to say goodbye or anything like the no emotional music because then as a viewer you're like wait whoa 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 what's going on you're in shock but no they're like let's get the emotions going things are sad oh my god and then that leads to a final conflict that's kind of dog shit who am i kidding it's very dog shit you got acdc playing with neil patrick harris holding a tire iron a pregnant woman a Smurf holding a fork and a dog that's probably 15 years old that's probably got a hip replacement surgery coming up next Tuesday. Like, I, I what what am I supposed to... Why is ACDC playing? That's Iron Man's thing. Take that shit out of there. Disgusting. Gross. Next thing you see is uh, Pop again tortured, onions, all this other crap, and then he's like, oh no, onions! And then he's like giving them his essence, which in, when you really say that out loud, it sounds really gross, not gonna lie. Now Gargamel, who had that little bit of magic turn a woman who looked like she was supposed to be 50, until now she now she looks like she's her actual age, 25. With that little bit of magic, now he's got a whole fuck ton of magic, right? And he struggles... After a bunch of Smurfs go la 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 I'm like, what are what are you doing here? Like, this is not badass. This is a bunch of tiny blue people, and he's got this powerful ass one, and he gets his ass kicked by golf balls, eggs, bowling balls, a drone, and little sticks. I wouldn't even penetrate the skin. You just be like, what the fuck is that? Like, it's no. It's whatever, and then he finally has enough. He starts capturing these people, and Papa Smurf gets released after this grand battle between Smurfette and the cat. Sure, and Papa Smurf has his badass three hundred shot where he goes no, and then he throws a, like a little fork thing, and then he gets captured. I'm like that wasn't very badass, and what he was even less badass was the fact that that little thing he threw barely made it two inches in front of him when Gargamel was probably about 15, 20 feet away. That's, I think that's pog for an old dude. I think you're doing good. Then Neil Patrick Harris comes in, saves the day. They say their goodbyes, and uh, now Smurfs are living like a New York City citizen in Smurf Village. And the whole message was family. Spend time with your family. Live inside the moment. And you don't have to be one person because that's what you were being called. There's way too many messages in this movie, and they all suck at delivering them. And I don't know. I feel like they should have just stuck to the whole, your title, because someone gave you a title doesn't mean you have to be that. I feel like that would have been a better, simpler message for a kid's film, not implying 17 different things. I don't know. Whatever. This movie's ass. Um, <sighs> stick to the end of the credits, and uh, you'll see what I'll be reviewing next week. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and all that crap. Later, and goodbye. Peace.